Next, we'll move on to our, I'm going to take a little things out of order. Uh, we're going to, because this isn't a regularly scheduled meeting that has been filed with the registrar, I am allowed to move things out of order a little bit. We'll be proceeding directly to the interim executive director's report. Good morning, everyone. Um, my executive director's report, interim executive director's report is at page 28. Um, there is a lot going on, to say the least. Um, much of it is in my report and much of it you also discuss later in the meeting. So I'm not going to go into great deal, although a great deal of detail, though I'm happy to answer questions. Um, at a high level, the internal and the external Corona task forces are leading much of our work to support members and the public through this global pandemic. And you'll be hearing more about that this morning from Director Kevin Platchy and former Governor Michael Cherry. Our admissions team, led by Chief Regulatory Officer Jean McElroy and Admissions Manager Gus Quinones, have been flexible and diligent in preparing for the summer bar exam with a rapidly changing landscape. And you'll also be discussing aspects of that later this afternoon. I also want to recognize our IT team, led by John Dawson, and our remote operations team, led by Anna Selvage. They've been supporting our 138 employees to transition to a fully remote work environment. They've acquired new tools, optimized our existing tools, created new processes and guidelines, and are just generally supporting this organization to adapt to rapid change. In addition to that, our normal work continues, including the development of our FY20 budget, which is an enormous amount of work for CFO Jorge Perez and his team, many of our employees, and of course, for our treasurer, Dan Clark, and the Budget and Audit Committee. It's difficult to overstate what extraordinary and difficult times these are. This organization has dealt with a great deal of change and conflict, and one doesn't have to look far to see that it continues to impact us. As the interim executive director, one of my chief responsibilities is for the well-being of our employees. And during these times, I do want to share with you that I have heard many expressions of grief, frustration, disappointment, and fatigue. If you look in any direction, both in the recent history of this organization and in the world around us, you will find broken trust and broken relationships. Add to that a global pandemic and a country facing the racism and inequity that stubbornly and violently persists in our hearts, our communities, and our institutions, and it's easy for people to feel hopeless and fearful. While we take steps to be responsive to these conditions, I do want to emphasize that even in the midst of these truly unprecedented challenges, WISPA's employees are mission-focused and forward-looking. In close partnership with dedicated volunteers and you members of the board, we have adapted almost seamlessly to new ways of doing work in an ever-changing landscape. Thanks to their work and your work, we are not only delivering existing services, but we're increasing services, resources, and information in response to the pandemic. I know you join me in feeling incredibly proud of the work of this team. I am genuinely committed to and hopeful that growth and learning can come from the darkness around us. And I believe that it will if we can accept the discomfort and continue to be open and curious and keep working together. Now I'm gonna to switch topics. <laughs> um, we have received a number of questions about my report on the draft rules for discipline and incapacity. Those have been under development since approximately 2017. Um, and they have not yet been submitted to the court, but there have been some questions and concerns about the path they will take when they are um, submitted to the court. And we are honored to have Justice Mary Yu with us today to discuss this topic with us. Thank you, Tara. I, I think probably more than anything else, I'm really very open to questions. Uh, first of all, if there are outstanding questions, but I thought this would be a good opportunity uh, to clarify or to perhaps even reassert uh, the court's relationship to the whole disciplinary process and the oversight. Um, I believe that we've always had a very good relationship in this area. There has been a respect shown um, by the Board of Governors, by the staff, and by everyone in understanding uh, that the Supreme Court exclusively oversees the disciplinary process. So when this whole 
question came up of what is the path uh, for submitting the rules, uh, I wanted to at least, again, answer questions, but also make it clear that in our view, those rules would come directly to the court. Uh, and then the court, if it decides that there should be uh, a consideration even of the rules, would send it to the rules committee and then there would be a official solicitation of the bar's input as well as the public. They would follow the normal path of an open process and publication. Um, but what was of concern to me, and maybe it really doesn't need to be a concern, but the concern was there really shouldn't be uh, a public weighing in on the rules before they're submitted to the court. Those should come directly from disciplinary counsel, and the court might not even decide uh, to go down that path. I, as you know, am only one of nine, so I can't say uh, what the court would do, but I think it preserves the integrity of the entire process and how this has been set up in the firewall that protects uh, the work of disciplinary counsel. So I'm happy to answer any questions. All of you know the rules, you've seen uh, ELC2, you understand the structure, so that's why I think it would be better to perhaps just entertain some questions. Are there any governors with questions? Mr. President, this is Governor Abel. A quick comment, if I may. Please, Governor Abel. Thank you. Thank you. One item I would also throw out there is that I have been serving as one of the stakeholder representatives on this DRI process. And in that capacity, I have been attempting um, to keep a number of members of this board updated about this process as it continues to unfold. So I can be a resource for this, for this board um, as this uh, continues um, to take place and unfold. Uh, and so I just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of that. I think most people are, but for those who are not, I want to make sure that you were aware that um, I have been in the room and been taking part in this process. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Governor Abel. And uh, Governor Grabicki, I see your hand up. Thank you. Um, Justice Yu, thank you very much for um, clarifying how this process is going to work for us. I've been inundated by phone calls and emails the last three days on this subject. And um, uh, I originally thought that I would pose that uh, WFDA sent a letter to the court um, asking that um, uh, what you have just described take place. I don't think that letter is um, uh, at all needed now that you have outlined the process. Uh, and I very much appreciate your assurance that um, if the court decides to look at this path, um, there'll be a full vetting process and opportunity for comment and input. Thank you. Rajiv, may I say something? Please. Yeah, and, and Governor, thank you, because the best thing is to hear that people care. <laughs> Um, the worst thing, and, and I know it's difficult to manage the voluminous communications that all of you get, but frankly, I'm really pleased that members of the bar care, that those who practice in the area care very much and want to have a say uh, in what the ultimate rule might be. Um, I can assure everybody here is that it's going to be a transparent process. The only no, thing... The only thing I was concerned about is that there be a clear understanding um, of the reporting mechanisms. I think all of you understand how important it is in terms of maintaining this integrated bar that we are very clear uh, about the different roles, but it will be transparent. And if the court moves forward, again, we'll send it to the rules committee where it will even be published for uh, comment, for larger and wider comment, but there'll be a solicitation directly uh, to the board of governors as well. Um, you know, I want to make sure people understand you shouldn't be interrupting other speakers. It's difficult on a Zoom meeting and to remain muted when another speaker is speaking. But I don't see more hands raised from governors. Well, is there Swiegel. anyone on the phone line? Governor Swiegel has his hand oh, up. Oh, Governor Swiegel and then Governor Peterson. And uh, thank you, Justice Yu, for that overview of the process. Uh, I, too, have been inundated by emails from members uh, uh, you know, 100% uh, of them concerned about the proposed rules. And, um, and I guess, uh, I guess from the perspective of the bar, Rajiv and Tara, I think it will be helpful and it might've been helpful to communicate in advance with the members what's going on. And essentially that the governors really have no role in this. Um, 
I think it could be the type of thing that just you know sort of adds to distrust and adds to um, you know concerns directed at the board of governors. And so I think getting out in front of that might have been helpful, and maybe some remedial communications that uh, about the firewall and that the board of governors has nothing to do with these rules uh, and has no impact on the substance of the rules and that this is entirely within the purview of the court. Thank you, Governor Swiegel. Governor uh, Peterson, and then I have Governor Stevens. I, I just raised my hand to make sure you're aware that Paul had a comment. I'm good. Oh, wonderful. Governor Stevens. So I guess um, my question um, to Rajiv and to Tara, because uh, I just decided to go quickly to the website, um, uh, which is in what ways and how many ways can we regularly communicate that message? And I, I asked the question because I don't think it's going to be a one-off deal. I, I think a lot of people consume information in various ways. And sometimes um, when they see something, they even may be under the belief that there's nothing to be done and now it's moving fast. And, you know, and if I don't get in there and get my comments, um, you know, I will be left out of process. And so I would one ask that um, sort of the old adage of Chicago politics early and often that we remind people what the process is and early and often remind them where things are in the process. Um, the other thing I will, I will say is um, even with the recognition in, in a number of ways, and I, I, I agree with Governor Swiegel uh, regarding what our role is, but that doesn't stop members who might say, yeah, but you should have a role and we should be able to talk to you. And, and in any way, we can at least facilitate that so that information actually goes to the court, but sometimes just recognizing it's probably going to come uh, through us. We're probably going to have to remind people what our role is in that process, but um, that we're probably going to have to do that just to um, just to assist people who um, either have a misconception or in any case believe that uh, the, the governor should do X or Y or Z. Absolutely, Alec. And yesterday when this started to uh, explode, I started working on crafting a message, which I'll coordinate with the court on, and we'll get it out from the official report of this meeting. We'll get it out in take note. Um, and the important thing, I think the important framing is, this is not a WSBA uh, Board of Governors instituted project. This is a court project in which some of our staff, you know, that they have the plenary authority over are working on, much like the court recently made a, a letter about the Triple LT program. The court is working on those rules, but they have asked for and have been given regulatory staff to assist them in the crafting of those rules. We will get to comment on those rules as well. And these, and what we got to make sure people understand is that there's going to be a very public and very uh, intensive process on the part of the WSBA to take a position and examine these things. Uh, next, I have. I have no more hands, uh, oh, electronic uh, Governor, hands. Uh, Mr. President? Yes, Ms. Governor Stevens. Yeah, just one other thing. And, and what I'm talking about, I, I'm still talking about the different ways in which people process information. Yeah. Uh, so, um, I mean, a letter is fine, but perhaps also a timeline that people can see that, that actually gets updated. I mean, in, in oh. various ways, just to just to help because of the different ways in which people uh, take in information and, and absorb information. Now, now that's interesting. Um, I'm going to look at virtually look at Justice U and say, you know, if, if assuming the, the court even has some kind of beginning of a draft this summer, what do you envision as a timeline? Well, I frankly was hoping uh, that these draft rules would be sent to the court pretty quickly. And it's because I was hoping to present it to the court at our en banc uh, the first week of July, 
so that it could be transmitted to the rules committee just because right it's a slow process and i'd like to keep things moving because they've been around for some time i know uh, when I took over from uh, Justice Wiggins, I saw some of the communications. And uh, again, I think it's time to move it forward. So I'll wait for the staff to transmit those to the court. But I would hope I could still put it in front of the court again in July and have the court make a decision decision to send it to rules. And uh, yeah, my last briefing on this was in uh, March of 2017 with the court, the Board of Governors and the court had a discussion about this. Okay, um, let's see. I see uh, Governor Higginson is in the waiting room for whoever's controlling the waiting room. And are there any more questions on this topic? Seeing none, hearing none, I want to thank you, Justice Yu, for making the time. I know you rearranged your schedule to be here. I think that's a, a great sign of uh, respect, and, and, and uh, we want to thank you. I want to know that uh, I, I personally really appreciated the statement the court made and the board is going to be uh, considering a statement of support for the court in their efforts during these times and uh, thank you for your service to our uh, state. And let me thank all of the governors as well for everything. I know it's been tough. I know there's a lot of things on your plate, some generated from members, some generated from us, some problems caused by us. I, I know that. And I personally just want to thank everybody uh, for the level of professionalism and everything that you do in terms of your service. I'm very sincere in expressing that gratitude. So thank you. Thank you, Governor.